Hey everybody, and welcome to the next park playthrough. Uh, so I'm jumping back over here to the Corkscrew Follies or Added Attractions uh, pack list for this one. I was thinking of jumping straight into Diamond Heights next, but uh, I thought this would be a nice little change of setting and landscape, just because the last few parks had either been the uh, the desert or just the kind of standard uh, grass and uh, sort of forest theme, I guess. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd uh, jump over to Future World just for a little bit of a a bit of a change up, I suppose. Um, having said that, I pretty much immediately regretted that decision because I was having a really hard time figuring out how to lay this park out. Uh, even now, I'm still not totally sure about what I've come up with, but we'll uh, we'll see how we get on. Um, so Future World was one of my least favorite scenarios as a kid. Um, I just remember having a really bad time with this one. Um, it's getting towards kind of the more uh, challenging objectives. So this one's about 1500 guests at the end of October year three um, and as well as that I've come to learn about that bug where guests can fall into the void where there's an upward sloped path just after the park entrance um, so I think a combination of those things meant I I don't know just had a really tough time with this one back in the day um, not to mention that the landscape um, I don't know it wasn't something that I was kind of used to I guess either so uh, yeah just all of those things adding up to not so uh, happy memories uh, back in the day but anyway so on to the build itself here so Future World comes with a pretty handy couple of uh, pre-built rides with the monorail and that uh, pretty iconic vertical drop coaster with the two loops at the entrance um, although it's a color scheme I probably never go with personally I still thought I'd uh, keep it uh, the monorail is handy in that it sets you up nicely for a park expansion um, but even if you didn't want to keep it, it's worth uh, probably about 10 grand, I think, when you if you demolished it, uh, which can obviously be put to good use elsewhere. Uh, I decided to keep it because I kind of wanted to keep with the original spirit of the scenario, I guess. Um, but I did end up making a few changes to it, mainly around the entrance because the way it looped around on itself and went back down to ground level wasn't too practical in my opinion. And there were a couple really slow spots on the layout where I had to climb back up from ground level uh, to um, to the higher elevations. So yeah, I just uh, kind of rebuilt the first station next to the large building on the side next to the entrance, um, which I think fits in a little bit more cleanly overall. I also reduced the length of the stations because they were a, a bit too much, I thought, overall. They're kind of uh, uh, dominating the landscape, even though there are only three of them. Um, this meant that uh, I had to reduce the uh, length of the, the trains to um, two cars per train for the three tra trains rather than the three, but uh, I was I didn't think that was too much of a sacrifice. Um, then uh, first first new ride I guess was the observation tower, which was just kind of wedged in nicely between those uh, two buildings I guess. I kind of settled on a central uh, city theme, I, uh, I guess, like a futuristic city, I guess, um, with uh, kind of based around those uh, buildings that uh, were already part of the scenario. I think they're kind of hideous looking personally, um, but I felt it was better to work with them rather than uh, trying to get rid of them um, because they are buildings made out of the landscape, so they'd be very expensive to uh, to flatten out. So I thought, may as well just, just work with what I've got. And from the central city, I'm probably going to be doing four different themed areas in each kind of quadrant of the park around that. Um, I haven't decided on all the themes yet, um, but two of which I know for sure will be, one of which will be a volcanic theme, as well as a mining theme using one of the big craters. So I did a bit of a path reconfiguration in the uh, central city area just to kind of make it look more like a, a natural looking park entrance. I used a few of the Martian themed objects for decorations, just uh, kind of in places where I'd usually put like a statue or fountain, just use some of those uh, fun looking uh, objects around the place. And just added in some pathing, just kind of looping around those buildings in the city area. Put in a uh, Steel Wild Mouse coaster, which is uh, always a good cheap coaster to start off with, um, but you can still charge quite a bit for it. Uh, pretty basic layout, but I'm pretty happy with, uh, with how it looks. Also blocked off the pathing to the outer monorail stations, just so guests would be forced to kind of spend money on the on the two coasters I had. Also helped prevent uh, guests getting lost as well. I did make some modifications to that vertical drop coaster, um, mainly the uh, bit of the layout after the loops. 
Um, I thought the that bit of the layout's a little bit boring, so I thought I would try and spice things up a little bit with a swoop turn that goes kind of under the lift hill, and then a nice wraparound turn for the vertical drop, uh, which I also added a volcano to. I think it makes it a bit more interesting, and makes the drop more of a centerpiece in a way. I also raised the height of the station, which should help alleviate the risk of crashes due to brakes failure, uh, as well as just help tidy up the, the path around the coaster, as I didn't need to have a path that went over the top of the station anymore. Made a bit of a station building for the coaster as well. Might change the colours later, not too fond of how they... I think they might clash a little bit with the, uh, the buildings that exist already, but... Yeah, we'll see how we go, might make some changes later. Then went for another kind of cheap coaster type in the steel mini coaster. Um, I used the rocket cars, uh, which I normally wouldn't use because they're, they're nowhere near as profitable as the log or ladybird um, trains. Um, but I thought it made sense in this scenario just because of the, uh, the futuristic kind of feel. Um, it's a pretty simple, simple layout. Um, uh, it's a bit of an awkward space that I chose to work with, but I kind of wanted to build something around that uh, building that was kind of sitting out there on its own. Uh, so it's it's kind of part of the city theme, but um, I guess it is uh, it is kind of just somewhat sitting awkwardly out there, but we'll, uh, we'll try and blend it in uh, a little bit later on. Finally added some uh, food and uh, drink stalls around the place. Probably just going to be sticking with the hot dog and uh, soda stands for, uh, for now, just because I want to prioritize uh, research in the... Uh, the thrill rides and uh, coasters as well. One thing with the objective being a little bit more challenging here is that I really do want to focus on getting a significant amount of rides in the park. Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of coasters, uh, lots of thrill rides, and uh, yeah, even quite a few gentle rides by the end of it as well. Just really want to get that soft gas cap up as, uh, as high as I can, also as quick as I can because uh, even though I'm probably not going to be doing a lot of like trees and shrubs, like I usually would. I am planning to do quite a bit of landscaping around the place. So uh, I do need um, pretty significant amounts of money coming in still. Having said that, even the landscaping itself, I'm probably gonna try and postpone right until the very, uh, like the very last thing I do. So I, I, I think, um, yeah, I'm gonna be taking a slightly different approach to what I've been doing in, the, in some of the easier scenarios where I kind of uh, build a ride, then do all the theming and decorations straight after. This time around I'm going to be building most of the rides and then um, do the theming of all of them in one hit later on just because I think it'll be more important to get all the guests in the park that I need and you know get that get that money coming in uh, sooner rather than later. So yeah it's going to be a little bit more of a different approach than, than usual. Having said that I did actually spend a little bit of time on the city in terms of theming there so I used a fair bit of the abstract theming. Um, just because I think it helps give a more modern look to the area um, and I've tried to embrace the, the futuristic or other world concept of the scenario as opposed to saying this is a desert or rocky landscape on uh, planet earth somewhere. After that though it was finally time to expand out of the uh, city area and uh, build something that I haven't done in uh, quite some time actually and that's build a uh, stand-up coaster. So they can be one of the more tricky uh, coaster types to work with, just because of the naturally very high intensity rating. Um, their excitement rating is not too bad, but it's uh, I found that it, it is hard to get over like you know five and a half, um, and an excitement rating over six is uh, I think really good for this sort of ride. Having said that, I wasn't too concerned with the stats as long as they you know as long as the intensity wasn't like too far above nine. I looked at lots of uh, Togo stand-up uh, point of view videos for inspiration for this one. Um, many seem to have like a vertical loop and then lots of helixes and swoop turns and some had some pretty funky looking airtime hills mixed in there as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I went for. Uh, you probably noticed the uh, this somewhat strange looking uh, lift hill. So another thing I noticed on stand-up Togos is the kind of flat section after the uh, after the crest of the lift hill, so it's a bit of a flat section which still has chain on it, um, and then kind of a kind of gentle uh, turnaround into the first drop. So it's kind of going for a bit of realism there, even though it's not entirely uh, practical, I guess, from a scenario play standpoint. 
Um, it was a pretty significant investment. I think I spent maybe 12 or 13 grand on it. Um, but I think it will be worth it in terms of the soft gas cap edition, which I think for the stand-up coaster is near 100. And uh, it actually it let me charge a pretty high ride ticket price. I think I'm at about $17 per ride for that. So I think it will pay for itself uh, pretty quickly. Speaking of the stand-up coaster, I do need a name for it. Um, I'm thinking something volcanic uh, related because it is in that kind of region. So if you've got any suggestions for that, please let me know in the comments. After the um, pathing for the coaster and then just a bit more pathing to the network around the volcano, I added in a car ride around the base of the volcano. I uh, decided to color it orange to make it look kind of like a surrounding lava river or lake of some kind, just at the, at the base of the coaster there. Added in a Gravitron at the junction uh, next to the monorail station. Um, and by now I had maxed out the loan pretty much. So while I was waiting for cash to build back up, I added in a few cheap uh, flat rides. So namely the uh, twist, um, the two swinging inverter ships, which um, also helped increase the soft gas cap a bit. Um, and hopefully uh, the revenue being uh, brought in. Um, but yeah, well, while I was waiting for the money to build up, added those in. The twist was actually going to be kind of the first ride of the uh, mine themed area. Although I think I'm going to incorporate the swinging ships uh, into the swinging inverter ships into that area as well. After that, I still didn't quite have enough to get the next coaster going. So I added in a mini helicopter ride into the city um, just to add a little bit more movement and uh, and make the city area kind of seem more like a, you know, a bustling sort of place and yeah, just give it a bit more activity basically. So. So I just hid the uh, station of the uh, helicopter ride inside one of the buildings and just uh, messed around a little bit with the pathing inside uh, just to kind of cover up some of those little details. Uh, yeah, and I think the building did a pretty decent job of housing that. Then started on a mine train coaster. So yeah, I did mention the mine theme earlier and I, th and I thought it wouldn't really feel right to uh, not have a mine train coaster in a mine themed area. So yeah, that's what I added in here. Like most mine trains that I've been doing of late, um, it's pretty small, not too high off the ground, but uh, it is fairly fast, this one actually. It has lots of uh, tunnels, lots of um, lots of twists and turns, um, and I really like the way it came out actually. I th think it, it, makes, it makes pretty good use of the fact that it's only like three tiles off the, off the ground at its highest point, I think. Well, three height units uh, between the station and the crest of the lift hill. The stats for this mine train turned out really nicely actually and uh, I think I was able to charge about a $16 ticket for this one so this collection of coasters should uh, should guarantee a pretty healthy uh, stream of revenue coming in for, for work later on in the scenario. Anyway I think that's just about it. Uh, thank you all very much for watching, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you in the next one. Alright thank you very much and cheers, bye!